First time I had the chance. Android. 
Android look and feel, Android menus and icons on an Android. It's really important for you and we'll leverage this web development. So build on Angular, the latest version of Angular. So if you think about the performance enhancements Angular has had from the original version to the current version, they are significant. Similarly, Ionic not only benefits from this performance optimization to Angular, but it has made its own uh, performance optimization from its original version to the current version. And also, you'll see some components that I'll, I'll show you again, where it will actually give you native like performance in that scenario. It is built for native Cordova apps. Now, we'll talk about what is Cordova in a second, but Cordova from a high level is the JavaScript API you can interact with to get access to native features on the phone. So I might need to access this uh, camera on the phone, the, the, you know, the geolocator, accelerometer, uh, whatever the case may be, Cordova is the uh, Technology to do that. So let's just dive into Cordova just a little bit. I, I answered the original question what is Cordova? You can think of it as a JavaScript wrapper. So from my JavaScript and TypeScript code, I can call in these native device APIs like a camera. And uh, so ultimately, it will resolve if you're an Android device, it will also resolve into a call to a Java API to deal with the camera or an objective C API to deal with the camera on an iOS device. But it's a nice JavaScript wrapper, so we as web developers writing JavaScript or TypeScript, it needs to call it. It is for native mobile apps, meaning a native, it's a native app that can be installed on my device from a native app store. Cordova has a rich plugin ecosystem, and we'll talk at the end about this thing called Ionic Native. It is not just a Cordova wrapper, but an Ionic wrapper, which is very uh, user friendly to like Angular, TypeScript syntax, and this has been around for a while, millions of downloads, tried, tried and true. Okay, just a couple more, more words about why I ought to. Well, one, because the Angular uh, ecosystem and TypeScript. So that's a huge benefit of developing. I also has its own navigation system that's optimized for mobile development. Platform theming, you already heard me mention the differences between Android and iOS. Build tools, which are really sweet, you'll be seeing this throughout. And the performance improvements that Ionic makes and optimizes specifically for mobile phone scenarios, which I will show later in the day. This is a really a little bit difficult to see, but for the multi-platform maybe, you see, I can tell that this Android on the left, because if I just look at the back button, it's that left arrow that Android has, and over here on the right is iOS, because you can actually see the word back, the back button, and then it's just like that left hand sign. And then even the toolbars at the top up here, you know, where it says the vision is all Android, and then over here you have the top toolbar button, you know, a more colored in for iOS. So you can see little subtle things. This is really subtle, but then the, the icons at the bottom of the bar are Android icons versus iOS icons. So you'll see a little platform theming is up there. may seem minor, but it, it actually is a major thing when you think about the user experience on the device. I, I want it to feel mobile. I want it to feel like a native experience that I use on the device. Okay. So we've done our five minutes of intro. We have a, a, a nice understanding. One thing I will say is um, what's happening here, a lot of times there's about well, what's being compiled? Is it compiling down the native code? It's not. Ionic is actually, if you think about even though it's a native app installed from the app store, you can think of it as a full page web view that the Ionic control is, the IS app is displaying. Like, the user, they wouldn't know if it's a Cordova based app or not, especially if we can give them good performance. Because a lot of times, like, well, what about performance? Well, but the proof is in the footage, so to speak, so let's see if it has good performance. If it does, we can prove to you that yes, we can build great right apps. Uh, with the technology. Okay, so let's dive in here. The first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to install the uh, CLI, and I've already got that installed. And so if I just type the word Ionic here, uh, you can see that it gives me several commands, and I can see that what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with a command called Ionic Start, which you see right here. It's Ionic Start. Here. Okay, so what if I don't know how to do this? I'm going to do Ionic Start dash dash help. And this will give me a little bit of help in terms of like, okay, you know, how am I supposed to formulate this? I see that I have an app name, a blank, blank template name. I can see some additional things up here. Sorry, I'm going a little here. My mouse just died on me, but I'm okay. So this is how I'm supposed to formulate the command right there. And even that one, I don't know what the templates are. So I can call ionic star dash dash list. This will list all the templates. So if I see here, okay, I've got a tab app. A blank or a side menu based app or a tutorial app or something, you know, or, as I mentioned, a tab based interface. So it will give you these templates out of the box. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new app called Ionic and we'll say Ionic Start. We give it the name of the app first. So, it's going to be Star Ford, of course, and 
game app. And the template I'm going to use is blank. Okay, meaning don't worry about giving me a navigation side menu or pad or anything like that. And just to show how brave I am, I'm going to hit enter, and this is going to not only install this, but it's going to do an npm install, full npm install. We're able to do that on stage with uh, body Wi-Fi, so we'll see how that goes. It takes a couple of minutes, but it keeps you entertained in that time. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip over here, and you notice I'm in this other directory called Ionic Side Menu Pack. And we have these commands, I'm going to say serve, it's so automatic, Ionic Serve, and this will start up an app called Ionic Side Menu App, which you see right here. So this is me creating an app where I just did Ionic Start, Side menu app, side menu template. I want to show you the folder structure. So this will take a couple minutes, and I'm filling time here while my actual app is getting installed. But this is really important. So you see the default structure, the default folder structure from an Ionic app. And what you can see is things like we have our SRC folder right here. And then we have our app folder. And this is where, for example, our app module folder. And then we have this pages directory down here. And here we have our pages on the and list. And if I uh, go in here a little bit, you can see that, okay, I have my home page, and we have these things like an Ionic header, an Ionic nav bar on the top. Then we have our content session down here. And as we might expect, we have our home.ps frame. Now, while that uh, was my, my, my Ionic server man came up, here's the app. I'm going to hit F12 for developer tools. And one thing I really like about Chrome is I can toggle the right toolbar. So it'll look like a normal web page where I can toggle the device. And notice how it's condensed here. It looks like a mobile phone. So I can, uh, and you can see that if I, I have a little side menu, so the side menu template, I can go to the list screen, and uh, here's my list of items. Notice the back button is that left arrow, so this looks like Android. I can come over here, and it's all built into Chrome, no additional menu or anything like that. I can say, hey, make this look like an iPhone, think that this is an iPhone. And then if I refresh this, They'll say, oh, okay, well, the hamburger icon still looks a little bit different. Uh, you can see we have the arrows over here that look different. I can select any items. The back button looks different. So it looks now like an iPhone app. You see a little bit of that preview of a platform theme. So I'm going to uh, switch to Android. Well, I probably, I won't start it with just one. Okay, let's also do a quick test here. Let's uh, flip over here. Okay, so actually, the MPM install is done. I want to flip back. So it's installed my Star Wars name game app. It's asking me next this to the Ionic dashboard. The default is yes. I want to say yes. Okay. And it goes, it's, it's already connected to my Ionic, Ionic dashboard. I'll show you what that is later. Don't worry. Do I want to create a new app? Or I have this other app called NG Vision, which if any of you were in my cognitive services talk today, you might have an idea what that is. So I'm going to say create a new app. What's the name of your app? Star Wars name game app. I think you can have spaces, but I just like to do this kind of syntax. And it says, okay, you're good to go. You've got your app. Now I'm going to speed into the directory, Star Wars Game app. I'm going to open it. And, and while we're at it, let's kill this other one. We don't need the size menu app anymore. So I'm going to exit out of that. And let's exit out of that. And here is our Star Wars Name Game app that we just created using the blank template. And we see, of course, that's our C directory. There's our basic directory right here. And all I have is a home screen. In fact, let's come in here and do Ionic Serve. So we're going to serve up our Star Wars name game. Now let me explain a little bit about the app that we're going to build here. So what we're going to do is Star Wars name game, I give it name like Luke, and Luke ends in a G. So then the next word I give has to be starting in a G, like Ewok. Okay, that ends in a K. So then, well, Kenobi, right? Smart people. You, you, you got the Star Wars, right? So mm -hmm. this is how my, my kids and I spend half the time on road trips. And stuff. But, so that's the app we're going to build over the course of this presentation. And my son is kicking my butt in this now, but uh, so I've got to do some drills to, to tone up on it. Okay, so here we go. I've got my blank app. There's no menu, no internet navigation, literally only one page. So we need to start adding some functionality. So let me just flip over real quick. Uh, yeah, there we go. Okay. So the first thing I'm going to uh, show you is I'm going to show you how we're going to add buttons and basic navigation to our app. And we're just going to build features as we go. So the first thing, buttons and navigation. So let me flip back over here to my editor. What I'm going to do 
is I'm going to let's put this on the side here and let's put our code over here. And one of the things I'm going to show is much like you get with the Angular CLI where you have this automatic reload, you get this with Ionic too. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come up to my Ionic nav box. I'm going to say color equals primary. So I think we can all agree that kind of light gray two bar is kind of one. So the primary color is blue. And let's also change the name of the app, which is the Star Wars name game. And you see, as I make now, I have auto save turned on for VS Code, so I didn't, I didn't actually do Control S to save, but I have auto save. So after like one second of not typing, it will automatically save the file. I own it just like the Angular CLI. So oh, there's a change made. I'm going to refresh. So we got the Star Wars name game here. So now over down here in the content section, this is the whole app right here. Let's blow this away, and I'm going to add a button. And the button will say play now. So this button isn't going to look like what? This weird gray thing. So to make it look like an ionic button, ion button is what we're going to add. And now we can see that that's okay, that's actually looking like a, a legitimate Android button now. And in fact, I want this button to span the width of the screen. So let that pull. And now we've got the button standing the full part of the screen. Also, I want to change the color. I'm going to say color equals secondary. And whereas primary gave us that blue color on the toolbar, secondary gives us the green. And of course, this is all colors are customizable, customizable, themeable, all that kind of stuff. So now that we have a button here, let's in fact add another button. So I'm just going to use Control C, Control D, and this other one is I'm going to duplicate the button. We'll say uh, you know, browse the data thing because when my son's not around, I, I definitely need to spend my time studying. And, it's, and I can browse the data and set it up on the floor. And we also need to add a click handle. So I'm just going to go ahead and maximize this. And we're going to add a click handler for this um, play now button. It's saying, and this is just a regular Angular syntax. So on this click, we're just going to say, go to play now. All right. Now I don't have, a, and this is going to take me to the screen where we're going to play the game to be where we enter our work. Our word entry page, so to speak. I don't have this created yet. So, what I can do, I'm just going to bring up the terminal that is integrated to this little code. I'm going to do some code generation here Ionic generate page, and we'll call this page word entry. So, you might think this looks very similar to the Angular CLI. It's not the Angular CLI, but it, of course, it's certainly modeled after that. So, you should have a very similar experience. Now, just generate it in my pages directory, this word entry page right here. So we can see that word entry stuff that got uh, generated right there. Now, because that just got generated, we want to make sure to go to our uh, app module and make sure it's included. So we want to put the word entry both in the declaration and the entry component. So I'm going to come in here to declaration. We'll say word, word entry page, control dot to resolve the import, and we're going to put it down there. So let's do word entry page. Okay. Now we actually need to perform our navigation. So remember, I, I named a method called go to play now. So let's go implement that method, go to play now. And what you might have noticed is that page that was generated, the constructor is injecting a nav controller right there. So that's an ionic construct. So I can say this dot nav controller push word entry page. Resolve the import, we're good to go. So the navigation in ionic is think of it like a, a stack model, very much like what you have in a browser. Navigate forward, you push pages onto the stack, push pages onto the stack, I go backwards, I pop pages off the stack. So it enables you to have pretty robust navigation. So let me also, let me show the app now, so I just added a bunch of code. So I can go ahead and maximize this one too. So if I go play now, you can see that it has navigated forward to that word entry page. Right now it's essentially an empty shell, and it's even giving me this back button for free. And it looks like Android has got a galaxy up here. So I've got basic navigation already in place. While I'm here, let's make sure we've got the database page added as well. So I'm going to come in here and we're going to do a similar thing. Ionic generate, let's smell it right, generate page data thing. I got spelled out all right. Okay. So once uh, that gets generated, again, we need to make sure that we get our module. Let's make sure this gets imported. I usually try to keep this somewhat alphabetical. My app is the top level app, so data, game, page, control, doc. Yep. 
Okay, we have the import at the top right there on line 10. And let's add it here too. Okay, and let's just add a quick uh, handler for it. So this will be, uh, we want to make sure we actually add the go to database page right here. Control that. And we have to make sure that the click handler gets added. So I'm just going to copy this. And let's add it over here to the click handler on the second button. Click equals paste. Okay. And let's make sure we're in good. Let's make sure we're in good shape here. So play now. Yep, that's still working. Data bank. Yep, that works. Okay. So we've implemented button and basic navigation. Okay. So now we have to start actually adding some functionality to our app. So we're going to come in here now, and we're going to add uh, several visual components that I have here. So I want to give you these things like cards, badges, which are very common contracts to see visually on the phone, input controls, toolbars, and I want to even come to this own grid system. So I'm going to show you these five aspects right here. Okay. So we need to start building out this word entry page. So I'm going to come in here to this word entry page HTML. The first thing is let's make sure that we've added. Uh, color equals primary, so we have a nice little blue color. Let's change this to be you know, enter term. We're going to enter our term for our name. And then down here for our content, let's just replace this. And I'm going to put a bunch of code in. I'm going to come back and show you what all that code is in a second. So bear with me now for a second here. And uh, I'm going to go into the TypeScript. We just need to add a variable called turn data so that temporarily. Uh, make sure that everything is tiled, and I want you to at least see. I want you to see the screen, at least a shell of the screen, uh, running uh, before we start putting all this uh, data. Okay, so let's come back here. Go to play now. Okay. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to knock this to the side again, because I want to be able to look at the code side by side. So we're going to go to this uh, word entry page, and what you're going to see here is a couple of things. First off. We have these things called an ionic card. And so right here, you can see it's got an outline right there of a card. And this is going to go to this right here with an ionic card. And then we have this word count. And we don't actually see the count, but we'll eventually see an ionic badge right here that will tell us what the word count is. Once we get data into the screen, we'll see the back. Then we have right here where it says words, it's kind of floating like gray thing right here. This is and it's an ionic label right here. It's a floating label called word. When we put our cursor in there, we'll float to the top, and right in under it on line 39, you see we have an ionic input. So when we click the cursor in there, it'll float up to the top, we can actually write input it. So in other words, if I come in here, and I you see how this is floated up to the top, the word floated up to the top, and I can you know, type any word. Okay. Now down here at the bottom, we have uh, a little toolbar at the bottom. I'm going to scroll down here, and what we're going to see here is I have this footer section right here, and containing inside the footer section, I have this check word history button, which we see right here, and I have this submit word button, which we see right here. So a couple of things to note. One is we have nav bars, we, we think at the top, but we also have toolbars. In this case, I put toolbar at the bottom. Inside the toolbar, you can see it says ion row on line 46. And we have one row, and then we have these columns here. And you're going to start to notice that we have ion row and ion column, and we even have this concept of not that one. We even have this concept here. The width fifty. So we can start to see the grid system. We're going to say make this width fifty, make that width fifty. We might be twenty-five to seventy-five, right? I to hundred. And so you see the grid system being used inside of Solar. You can use the grid system anywhere. Else. But it makes it super easy to do your alignment depending on you know, how you want the layout of a particular space. In this case, I'm just calculating a toolbar. But you may be using the grid system for the main part of your page. So is this all those pixels or percentages? So this is percentages, yeah. So it's 50 50, adding up to 100. So you are going to have the grid system space in, in percentages. Having said that, uh, the grid system is also able to say, okay, just you're going to put 10 rows in there, I mean, 10 columns in there. Don't put a width on there. And it will intelligently distribute it them evenly. So if there's 10, it'll be 10 percent of them. Pretty skinny columns on mobile sites. But the point is, you don't even have to. So, so in, in reality, the width 50, I didn't even have to do 
that because it would have seen there are two columns and said, okay, 50% each. But I did it intentionally because I wanted to show it. Okay, so we've seen a whole bunch of stuff. Some of the stuff you couldn't see quite as easily because um, there's no data in there, so we got to get some data. Now, the way we typically get data in there is we use services that uh, oftentimes will make HTTP calls. And not only that, but we need to manipulate the data. So I'm going to show how we're going to get the data in. And actually, I'm going to not use HTTP in this example. I'll use HTTP in a little uh, example at the end of this talk. But then once I get the data, I need it, maybe to do some manipulation on it. For example, someone with Han Solo, I need to be able to look up is Han Solo in our database. Um, so I need to do some filtering, some look up. Uh, who knows? I might need to do fuzzy searching, whatever. And so I might need a third party library. In this case, I'm going to it's just an in memory data set. So I'm going to be able to use a library like Euro Dash. So, how do you bring third party libraries into an Ionic app? So, uh, hopefully, you'll see that very easy to do. So, let's flip back to our code here. I can maximize this right there. And I'm going to come down here and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to generate a service, or we'll call it a provider, as, as uh, IR does. And for our game API, so I'll say Ionic generate provider game API. So this is going to be the thing that provides the data for our app. And then I also want to bring in uh, this low dash library. This, has, this is as simple as npm install low dash 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 state. Standard npm install command. Now, let's go over to this provider folder that was just generated. You can see right here, here's the game API, and that was just put in here. Let's open up that file that npm install has completed. And you're going to see that by default, what it's generated here is okay, we're going to assume that you want to do HTTP because it's generated a provider, so we'll give you some baseline stuff. Uh, you don't have to use this template, uh, but again, it just, it's convenient, certainly from a third generation uh, standpoint. Now I want to be able to import uh, ion or uh, low dash. So I'm going to say import star as underscore from low dash, because that's typically how we refer to low dash. And when we do that, we can use things like uh, <coughs> underscore dot, and we can actually start to get Allison. If the uh, VS code hasn't caught up to us yet, or there it is for n, uh, but we can actually get uh, Allison from low dash just by adding the import. Okay. So the other thing we want to do is we want to provide data. Now uh, the data. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cheat this a little bit. The first of simplicity. I'm going to bring this file called uh, data.ts, and I'm going to bring this into the application just because uh, open this in Explorer. And I'm just going to paste this right in here, and this is me literally going to StarWars.com web API and screen scraping it, and this little node script that like got it down to my computer. And so it's a big Huge now massive JSON file, and I'm exporting this little variable called data right here at the top. All right, so I guess you can see it with the elephant over. There it is, data right there. Okay, so let's close that. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to say import, import, I'm going to say that way from data. And because, you know, we get some elephants to this, and there it is, data, that variable pops up proving that, yeah. I recognize that we're exporting the same data from over here. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is let's, uh, I'm going to actually inject some code here, and then I'm going to show you what I did. I'm going to come back and make sure everyone can see what I did. Here. Okay, so we have a bunch of game entries. So as the game is played, we have these game entries, and we have data bank items. So if someone comes in and gets a pawn, that's the first entry in the game entry. You can see we have this array of data bank items right here. Okay. And the other thing we want to be able to see is I, I want to make sure that it is, we can actually find it in the database. So the first thing I'm going to do is this check word function. And the first thing is, and I'm just, for, I want to do all case sensitive searches, so <laughs> I know it's a little, I'm a little brute force, but I'm just doing two lowercase everywhere to make it quick and dirty. And I want to first see, can I find an exact match? So if someone says, uh, Han Solo. Let me just let me see. Do I have an exact match in there? If so, great. It's an exact match. Uh, on line 25, return true. Correct. The person got a correct choice. However, what if they just said Han? 
and not Han Solo. I want to be able to check for partial words in there. So that's what line 29 is doing. It's basically saying, okay, split what you may have found, and the, the, the low dash includes function on line 30 says, is the term they put in included in any of these terms? And so, yes, we also will count Han for Han Solo. The other thing we need to make sure is as we uh, go down, we need to have some validation. So if we think about this, what the validation might need to look like, uh, well, for one thing, we need to make sure that the word is closed. Oh, <laughs> what happens with the mouse break, like right towards the moon, I'm not talking about that. We'll, we'll figure it out. Okay, so first of all, we need to see, is, is it done? If we didn't put anything in, we can't just submit from one. Then we actually also want to make sure, check if the first letter is correct. So if the person just put in, you know, on, then the next person, their, their word has to start with the letter N. The on ends with the letter N. So we just check. Right here, and by the way, all this code is freely downloadable. I'll make sure. I know I'm going quick here, so if you're missing any of it, you can download it all to GitHub and, and slowly go through on each thing. The other thing is we've got to make sure that the word hasn't already been used. That's cheating, right? So if someone already used Han Solo, uh, we don't want them to be able to use it yet. And then there's always the debate with my son about, well, if I use Han, then can I use Han Solo for the next one? No, that, that entry is confusing, all right? So we're validating all that. Okay, so now that we have, um, and, and the other thing is, because I use this, I use this generation, if I go back to my app module, you can see that in my provider section, it has actually already entered the game API provider into my provider section. So that's just another, nice, another little nice of the code generation. All right. So we've got our data you know, ready to use that data. Now, we're going to start building this out a little bit. I'm going to add code, alert, total, and list. Because now that we're going to, now we're able to start playing our game, we want to make sure that we have a, a post that pops up that says, oh, sorry, you can't use that word, that word's not found. Or maybe an alert that might pop up saying, congratulations, you had a correct entry. All right, so now let's implement that functionality. So when it comes to the word entry page, come down here, <laughs> and that is the PS page. Right now we added all the HTML, but we don't have, um, the TypeScript yet. So again, you're going to just uh, have to bear with me here for a second because I'm going to put a whole lot of code in. And then we'll, we're going to look and see uh, what this code does. So actually, you know what? Before we look at the code, let's look at functionality first. Let's see this. Um, okay, so this sometimes happens. So um, when you get an error like this, sometimes what happens is because I have my, my PS code set to uh, update every time a file changes, Sometimes I'm writing a lot of code, and that happens a lot. So sometimes you just need to come in here and do an ionic serve and sort of restart it, uh, and, and it will all be fine. Don't worry. Um, so yeah, what happens is like I save the file, it starts the rebuild process, and then I'm typing more examples, and, you know, and it gets backed up because all these builds get put on the queue, so it gets a little confused sometimes, and that happens. Like I said, just go back and reset it. Okay, now it's coming back, and uh, let's get that well. Or how what the duration is. So we do 
controller.create, and then right here we do percent. All right? And then right below this, you're going to see a similar pattern. In fact, instead of for the code, you're going to see Built our whole game. We built our game. We've got the, the words being looked up. You know, the, the, the 
the validation is correct, the work is being fair, and we're, we're cruising. But as I mentioned, uh, my son is getting to the point now where he's telling me every time, and so I need to study what he's not around. So that's, remember that database page that we saw? Well, that's my, my secret weapon where I can go there and I'm just going to be able to study on my own time uh, because I want to you know, put it in my favor here. So we need to implement a couple of things here. Now, as you just heard me mention, if we have a thousand items in our list, the performance is going to be pretty bad on a mobile device. Um, and that database has a lot of items. Okay? So we are going to implement some things in that database, uh, specifically virtual control, that are going to help our performance and give us native like performance. Okay, so that is what I'm going to be doing with my final trick. Um, so we want to go to our uh, database, and actually, uh, I'm going to copy and paste one more thing in here, entry detail, and we're going to put this right here. So when we actually look at uh, a database item, we want to be able to see what it looks like. So entry details right there, and of course that means that's my app module, and add uh, the entry detail page here. Entry detail page, control doc, import database. And let's do it down here again. I'm trying to Okay, so we put that in. Let's go to that database right here that I generated in the very beginning uh, of the talk. And if you just refresh our memory, if you browse the database, so what we want to do is get the entire database from our service and, and we want to display it on the page. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is inside Ionic content right here. I'm going to add an Ionic list. This list is going to look slightly different, but you'll see it in just a second. And I will also go to the databank.ts. And for the databank.ts, I'm going to actually replace the entire thing. Okay. I'm going to show you this code in just one second. First, I want to hone in on this code right here. Okay. So if we look at this code, it starts out, it looks like I have an Ionic list. But it looks a little bit different than the Ionic list we just saw. For one thing, we see this thing called virtual scroll. And this is being down to a property called entry. And then over here, we have this thing called a header function. And this is get header. And we're going to add a get header function in here because it's hard to keep track of where you are in the massive list. So I want to have a header of some kind. The header I'm going to put in is an alphabetical header. I want an A for all the A's. A B for all the B's, B, 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 and so forth. So we'll have our nice little header. And the other thing you're going to see here is that in here, when we look at the actual uh, the, the button, it says star virtual item, let entry. So it looks a little bit different, maybe a little bit weird. You see like an NG4, let does something of something. Here you're saying let entry, essentially of entry, up there where it has the virtual scroll. So that's how it relates together. Okay. Okay. So let me show you the screen and how it works, and then we'll come back and take a look at the extra code behind the database. And we'll go to the database right here. And okay, I have a nice little scrollable list. Two one D. All right. People, there's a modal that pops up. Okay. So we can scroll down here. Ayla Sakura. Uh, I literally have a German Shepherd named Ayla spelled this way. I now I thought it should be PMI. So okay. All right. So Admiral Akbar. All right. So we've got our database and we have this massive list of scrolling. And of course, of course it's going to perform well because I have like a very powerful laptop uh, on, working on a very powerful desktop browser. But I do want to show just a little bit more about how that um, those headers work right here. So if I look at remember we had that get header function right here. If I look at database.ts. Yeah, Here's the get header function. Here's what it looks like. And what we can see is we are it's going to pass in the record, the record index, and the entire collection of records. And the first thing we're going to do is, well, whatever record you pass in here, give me the, the uh, first character. The title, bracket zero, the first character, and again, two uppercase, I'm just <laughs> and then if the record counts zero, well then obviously that's that's a, a record count. Very first item, so put whatever the first character is, return first character is that. But then when I come to like, the second one, I say, well, if the first character is not equal to the record and the record index minus one, so if I got to a B and then
said, I look at, we'll do record index minus one. Is that with an A? Oh, this must be the first B. So return this first character. Otherwise, so if I'm RP and the last entry was also B, it's not a header right. All right, so you can see that logic right here. And that's something we're able to put in those nice green headers for A, B, C, D, separate that. Now that's all well and good. One final feature we need to add here, and that is that's still a massively scrolling list. So if I want to get down to like look at the wide wing fighter, like I'm even with my powerful laptop, I'm gonna do a lot of scrolling. So wouldn't it be nice? If we had a little search functionality. So what I'll do here is under the HTML page of the database, right under the nav bar, we are going to add oops, it's just you know the typing in the head. We undo, undo. Don't panic people. It's all good. All right. We're gonna add a toolbar. And what we're adding to this toolbar is an ion search bar, an ion search bar, and it's being bound to an NG model called query text. And then the ion endpoint here, input, is update entry. All right. So it's going to, when someone types a search term in, we need to update the entry. We need to filter the list, right? So it is what you think it is. If we look at that entry, update entry method, you're going to see that I'm just using a little low dash code, two lines of low dash. That's all it is. The entire thing is implemented right here. We're just doing a cheesy two lower right here. And then I'm using a filter functionality for low dash. And because I want to do a substring filter, I'm using include. Right? That's it. I'm not doing an exact match. I'm doing an include, meaning substring. If this term is found anywhere in the work, anywhere in the work, that's it. I did this search bar up on HTML. I did the two lines of code, really the one line of code here. That's it. All right, so now let's go run it. I'm going to come in here, browse the database, and cannot read property length is undefined. What did I do wrong? Okay, let's see. So this is either, this is either, I might have to reset this again, or I might have another issue that I need to look at. Okay, so let's, let's have a quick look here at the database right here. My search looks good, free text is right there. I think I updated my database, that's fine. Uh, let's see, did I? I think I did. I think I did. Did I do anything wrong? I'm about to find out. Oh, okay. All right, so this is literally like the last thing I needed to do to fix the landscape. So thank God you all supported me. We're all on this day for all the things. Okay, so database. Now I'm just a little bit too much of a perfectionist. We'll come here and say color equals primary, and let's put our space in here, because like I said, let's, let's, if we're going to do a job, let's do it next, okay? All right, so data bank here, and now we'll come in here, sky, and dance. It's filtered everything. So we have Anakin Skywalker, Luke Skywalker, P16 Skyhopper, come on, I know a couple people know what that is. I can click on any one of these, and I can see the results, okay? Now, what I'm going to do here is we actually need to get this going on myself. Here's my phone, all right? So if you recall, at the very beginning of the talk, I said, do you want to add it to your dashboard? And I said, yeah. So, and it also said, great, if you want to do that, cool, and also don't forget to commit your code. So it's probably a good idea if I do that now. So I'm going to do a git add, git add, and then we will do a git commit. And I implemented functionality. And then we are going to say git push ionic master. Okay. And what we're going to see here is that it's going to push this up to an ionic hosted git repository. It pushed it up. You can still post, you know, post your code in GitHub, and, and that's all fine. Um, but we're also going to host this in uh, ionic hosted git. And what happens here is I'm going to flip over to my ionic dashboard. I'm going to, and you guys, one app, I'll give you this app right here. I am going to refresh it, and because at the beginning of the talk, talk I said yesterday a new one, there's a Star Wars name game app that I created right at the beginning of the talk. And because, and there's this is that implemented functionality right there, that was my last GitHub commit, which you just saw me do. And we can see right now, it's in the process of downloading this code and actually, you know, take like a minute, it's like a CIC pipeline that automatically uh, connects. Now what happens is there's a, um, 
a tool called Ionic Field, an app you can just install from the App Store called Ionic Field that will let you deploy right to your cloud, right to your device. And you can even use certain things like the camera. And that's all data features are supported with Ionic View. I'll show you an example of that in a second. But it's a great way to just get a quick deploy your phone, and maybe I don't want to have to deploy all of the Android tools or all the iOS tools uh, to my laptop and get all that stuff. I just want to have a simple cloud build and the job. My, I put my screen resolution pretty small, so I want you guys to see my fonts and everything. So just, we'll see how this goes. So I'm going to flip over here to Ionic View, and I got to do a pull down to refresh once it comes in. And we, we will see, I'm going to refresh this here. There's Star Wars main game app. So I'm going to tap on that, pulling the code down from my Ionic Cloud. I can always shake the device to get back to the game menu. And there it is. There's what we just created. So I can come in here. And let's play it on my device. On, huh? yep, Muggler, Scoundrel, Hero, Naboo. Yep, that's correct. I can look at the word history. I can see my toast, my alert. I can come over here. I can browse my database. I can come in here. And I can look at Admiral Akbar. Make sure this is refreshing. This is the picture looks really good on my phone. It's just, you know, a little bit of delay from here to there. I can come in here and uh, when I have how fast scroll. So even though I have thousands of items, I think it's safe to say it, it is not choking up on the fact that usually it's about 50 items. This was literally like freeze and choke, but yet you can see how fast the performance is because we have that virtual scroll. What the virtual scroll is doing is basically saying, okay, rather than inserting a thousand items into the DOM, we're going to put like 15 items into the DOM. As you scroll down, we're going to take away the items from the top of the DOM and put them in the bottom. If you scroll the other way, we're going to do it in the other direction. In fact, these native uh, apps, that's what they're doing. It's just that by default, HTML isn't done by default, but these native apps, they're giving you controls that are doing the virtual scroll. So now Ionics providing you a, a tool that does virtual scroll. So it's really six of one, half dozen of another. Okay, and so let's come in here, I control the top, I can even do sky, and you can see that by doing sky, it's a whole filtering mechanism, and I can, I can search by which Skywalker. Now also we have native on the device. So, in addition to just deploying it to Ionic 2, I want to actually be able to grab an APK, deploy it on my device, which the dashboard lets you do as well. So, I'm going to come in here and grab this app called NG Vision, which uses native features of the device. And these native features are things like um, using the camera, using the file system, because Ionic View will let you use the camera, but it won't, for example, let you use the file system. So, I actually have to natively install the app on my phone to use the file system. So I have a map here, so I take a picture, store it on my file system, and then upload it to an API. If there's anyone in here at my AI talk recording, you'll probably have an idea what this app is about to do. So I'm going to take a picture, and we'll start out by taking a picture of my laptop. And actually, let's do that. Let's do it, make it look a little better here. So I'm going to do the horizontal. Okay. Yep, that's good. All right. And now I'm going to upload the picture to Microsoft Cognitive Services. Uh, computer vision and say, what do you think is in this picture? And we will look at it and analyze the picture. And I think it's an open laptop computer sitting on a table. All right, let's do one more. Take a picture. Oh, it's too long here. Okay. And let's upload it again. And you're going to see this entire app, about 50, 60 lines of code. I'll show you this code. I think it's a crowd of people in a room. All right, come on. Come on. <laughs> I'm going to show you the amazing code took to do all this. Okay, is I'm going to come in here and do the NG Vision app. Let's open this in VS Code and. And what we're going to see here is we have a home screen, and this is the extent of the home screen. This is it. This is all the code we use. We have a button, which, of course, you guys know how to use. It says, take a picture. And then we have this card right here. We know where cards are. And we have an image. And then down here, we have a button that says, if the image is there, upload the image. That's the extent of the HTML in this app. And then if we look at the TypeScript code behind it, all we're doing here 
is we're going to take a picture and we're, we're getting the camera options right here and we have a reference to the camera and we simply call the get picture method which is ionic native getting an uh, attachment to the native call that they get picture and then we come back with a picture we copy to the local directory and then when we say upload to cognitive services the whole upload button which finds out what that image is loading controller create and then come back, come back here loading controller present Here's my card coded authentication key for my cognitive services. You saw me do that this morning. I'm simply making a call to the computer vision API endpoint right here. And then I'm just using the file transfer to do the upload. And when it comes down, I'm showing an alert that says, scroll down. I'm showing an alert that says, I think it's subtitle exact message that came back to the server. I think it's this room full of people. All right. Yeah, I'll make this code. I mean, I know it says 83, but it's not really 83 lines of code. Right? We won't count these reports because they're like space, but like 50 lines of code is real simple. Okay? I'll make this available, really simple, computer vision API um, using, using Microsoft. And that's all coming from IOM data. Okay, so in conclusion, go forth, people, and go build right great app. You can, I hope I've shown you that you can really build some very powerful things in a short amount of time. I know I went fast for like 15 minutes. Um, here is my uh, some references. Here's my uh, email, my Twitter. I'll be posting everything on Twitter um, where you can download everything so there won't be any doubt about any of the codes. We'll all uh, have available to everyone. So, but again, I really encourage you to go out, get your hands dirty with this technology, have fun with it, go build great stuff. Thanks, everyone.